had a great weekend. Did anybody do anything mm-hmm. special or fun that they like to share? Oh. oh. Well, you know, last week we had quite a, a lot of information um, with Kelly's um, uh, Element 23. And um, through Element 23, I think that we've had possibly some people that have had some awakenings. I know one person who's had an awakening uh, from Element 23, and I'd really like to invite her to come on and share with us what that was all about. So um, with no further ado, Yoli, would you like to come off mute and share with us, please? Hello. Um, So this past week I was sharing, well, Kelly's my coach. So I was sharing with Kelly about how one of the things that for me this past week, I looked in the mirror and I had one of those moments. Well, I had those moments where I looked in the mirror and all I saw was old me. Um, meaning me before plan. And I had to stop and pause a minute because it was one of those things where I was like, okay, this is good. You know, I knew I had made some choices that weren't the best, but at the same time, I had to remind myself that what I, my mind was telling me I was seeing is not what was real. So I backed off, I got on the scale and looked at the number and was like, see, this is not old to you. Um, this is 80 pounds less of you, old you. And then I also had to then take a picture. I found myself, I took a picture because that's been my mechanism is I take a picture and I look at the picture and then I can see it. Because sometimes when you look, when I look, you look in the mirror, what, because I had seen myself a certain way for so long, what I see is old me is what I call it, old me. Um, And so I was sharing that with her and I was like, you know, I've been processing through it and it really helps me when I can take the time to stop myself right where I am and kind of go, okay, you are not that person. You're not, you don't, that's not what you see is not what the real reflection. And I really, for me, the best tool has always been to take my camera, snap a quick picture, and then I can turn around and look at it. Because when I look in the mirror, I, the reflection I see is not what I'm looking at at that moment. So that was kind of, you know, she asked if I was sharing. I'm like, yeah, because I have, I know I've mentioned that to other people before. I'm like, I have to take a picture sometimes just to remind myself because our minds will play those games with us and we'll forget where we are, especially when it's times like where, you know, well, I made some choices that weren't the best, but they were choices and I made them thinking about it. And so I just have to remind myself, you've come a long way and look at where you are and not see where you were. Yeah, uh, that's really powerful, Yoli. Thank you for sharing that because it really says that you're you know, stopping and you're taking a moment to check in with the new Yoli and not reverting back to automatically everything from the old. Like we're all on a journey, we're all moving toward on this continuum to better health and better mindsets and better emotional health, all those things. So that is that is just so wonderful to hear you say that and to have that knowledge, so like to be able to stand in that that knowledge for yourself and see it for yourself. That's so great. Does anybody else out there have anything they'd like to add to what Yoli has just shared with us? Okay. Well, if not, then I will go ahead and well, first of all, I'm Cheryl Pease. Um, I've been coaching just a little under two years. Um, Vanessa and John Jackson are my coaches. Um, but in all honesty, they are, um, really, uh, not my health coaches. They're really more my, um, spiritual, emotional health, uh, guides. And so this really, uh, this element that we're going to go over element 24, your journey to your higher consciousness, they have played a big role in that for me. So, um, 
uh, and I want to thank Kelly for inviting me to um, share with you guys. So let's just go ahead and get to it, shall we? So your journey to higher consciousness. <clears throat> Hang on one second. I got to try to move my, oh, oh, nope. That's not what we want. That is not what we want. Sorry, everybody. I got to move my gallery somewhere else so I can actually see. Sorry, everyone. Here we go. Let's try it again. Technical difficulties. Ah, journey to higher consciousness. So we're going to cover mindset. We want to understand those four levels of consciousness. In our skill set, we're going to look for those uh, tips on how to grow and develop our own personal consciousness. And then we're going to look at action steps. We're going to look at, you know, can you decide what is truly important to you and then create a plan to bring that into being. And um, before I go on, I will apologize. I've been a little ill, so <clears throat> I'll uh, apologize in advance if I have to stop and cough or something. I love that we always start our quotes with Dr. A. So Dr. A says, your level of awareness and self-awareness will continue to expand as you become a higher version of yourself. So what that says to me right there is practice, practice, practice. So we've got these levels of consciousness. We've got our number one is our self-interest, our I'm getting being blocked by my gallery here. I apologize. Let me see if I can move it. Sorry, everybody. We are going to have to go back to technical difficulty number two. Cheryl cannot get her gallery out of the way. There we go. And we're going back to share. <laughs> Stay with me. And let's try it again. Now I can read it. So the four levels of consciousness. One is self-interest. Number two is actualized self, our integrated self, and our selflessness self. But what is consciousness <clears throat> before we delve into level one? Well, by definition, consciousness is your individual awareness of your unique thoughts, memories, feelings, sensations, and environments that you've been exposed to. Essentially, your consciousness is your awareness of yourself and the world around you. Um, this awareness is subjective, but it's very unique to you. Basically, if you can describe something that you're experiencing in words, then it's part of your consciousness. I hope that makes sense. So when we talk about level one, when we're at this level, oftentimes we find ourselves perhaps going below the line. So your ego is in charge at this level. And at conference, we all heard the saying, your ego is not your amigo. And that stands to reason in this case, your ego is not your friend. Your ego actually stands to be your enemy oftentimes. So when we're at this level, we often go below the line, playing the victim, having feelings of scarcity, um, that there's not enough love or attention or friends or money, you fill in the blank there. Um, this threatens our sense of security, our sense of approval and our sense of control and controlling our environment or controlling other people. And we'll have a tendency when we're here to blame and find fault in others. So your ego actually is in charge and it wants to be right all the time. Show us how to partner with the Holy Spirit. So how are we gonna progress from this level? So if you notice here on the left side of the diagram, you see the drama triangle, the victim, the hero, the villain. And then we can see that as we begin to um, recognize some of our challenges, we can rise up and circle back around sometimes. So the way to progress away from ego and self is to recognize when you're closed off, perhaps from a sense of fear or um, some sort of a threat, 
and then stop. So see, we have our stop, challenge, and choose here in the middle of the diagram. Um, we want to stop before we respond. We want to become aware of our emotions and shift our thinking to our higher brain. So for an example, um, and this is a simple example, but think he, she is making me so mad or angry or frustrated. Maybe you're thinking that. Um, and you want to shift that kind of thought to that higher thinking brain with something more like it, um, in his or her presence, I notice that I feel like, so, like blank, right? And in that case here, you've challenged your conventional response that may have not ended well to why you are feeling this way. And then you can choose to shift back to being open and curious. You can choose to and, and be willing to learn in those moments. And you might take a few deep breaths in those moments or perhaps even change your body posture. And speaking of body posture, I saw a study from Harvard by a gal named a Amy Cuddy. And you can see her TED talk on this if you'd like. But in essence, the study was about body language. And you'll see in another slide later, I'll point it out, but when we're closed and contracted or arms crossed, we're in that defensive stature. And so our mind is actually in that defensive nature. But if we can learn to open, maybe drop our hands by our side or even put our hands behind our backs and open our posture, then there's a sense and a, and a, and a, a knowing that we start to open the way that we're thinking and feeling. Um, Level two, the actual actualized self taking responsibility for your life. So level two, in this um, structure, well, let me show you a structural tension chart. So this is that closed off body that I was just talking about. And then you've got the celebrated optimal health well-being guy there on the right. He's got big arms, right? So if you think about that, when we're closed, defensive, and committed to being right, we tend to show that in our body language. Um, when we're open, we stand taller, our shoulders are set back a little bit more. And so that helps make that neural connection um, from emotion to our higher brain. So in the structural tension chart, you can see that as long as you pay attention to those secondary choices there in the middle, being open, curious, focused on learning, centered on your personal growth, uh, open to that feedback, asking those questions, looking for for feedback from similar others. You have that abundance mindset, and then that you're action-based, that you're taking action toward that personal growth, toward that self-actualization. And my goodness, if you can stay there, you are definitely gonna be able to set yourself free from this defense close uh, posture. You may still have those moments, but um, by increasing that awareness, It'll be more easily it'll be more easy for you to shift back to that higher vantage point and not to drift back down to that drama triangle. So level three is the integrated self. So we're internally stable, we're flexible and adaptable. So this level requires that you've mastered emotional literacy. You're beginning to master both how you operate internally and how you interact with others and your surroundings in a more effective way. You're resolved to, uh, that you, you've resolved a lot of that emotional baggage, you're no longer rigid or chaotic and you're creating change. Excuse me. You're internally stable, flexible, adaptable, and you see only confidence and energy in your future. You're fully capable of making choices and creating change. And this level, having a conscious mentor um, is really important and it would be a great advantage to you um, if you had a mentor to help you in this area. Plus, having a lot of deliberate practice is also advantageous. And then we're at level four, selflessness self in service of mankind. At this level, life has few struggles. We're no longer frustrated or judgmental and negative emotions seem to have disappeared. 
we have we are compassionate for others but we're also very compassionate to ourselves we show that self-compassion life is happening through us and we feel connected to something bigger than ourselves in this state um, we continue to grow through our spirituality connecting to our higher level of personal consciousness Now, when it comes to transformation, to be able to be open and change yourself, to widen your perspectives, to grow and learn, that's really powerful. And when we see the world through our new eyes, everything changes and we become better equipped to fully embrace the world. But what about people who make it all about themselves? And I love this diagram. When people create, so, if we're, cre we're the creator, the big bubble there on the left side, and we're creating something, if what we're creating is more about ourselves and how we feel and how we act and what we're creating speaks about us, then that's really the smaller self. It, you know, you, there's the person who is a creator and doesn't make the creation the bigger piece um, their, their success or failure is um, going to be more personal and they're more likely to be closed minded, defensive, and more likely to want to be right all the time. Versus people who organize their lives around what matters most. And to me, this is the crux of what Dr. A is leaning into here. Um, they just, people who are a creator for creation. They decide what is truly important to them and they bring it to life by deciding and focusing energy and time into creating what they want. So you become the dominant force in your life, your intrinsic motivation, your increasing competency and desire to relate and share begins to fuel your progressive ability to accomplish your goals and quite frankly, any goals you might set for yourself. Now, what I'd like to do is I'm going to share a little short video with you guys. And I need to do that from this level. I'm going to try and share the screen again once I get it going, but we'll see. And it's just a short two minute video and it talks about, well, you'll see how we think. So give that one second. Whoops. Not so long ago, many scientists believe that the brain did not change after childhood, that it was hardwired and fixed by the time we became adults. But recent advances in only the last decade now tell us that this is simply not true. The brain can and does change throughout our lives. It is adaptable, like plastic, hence neuroscientists call this neuroplasticity. How does neuroplasticity work? If you think of your brain as a dynamic, connected power grid, there are billions of pathways or roads lighting up every time you think, feel, or do something. Some of these roads are well-traveled. These are our habits, our established ways of thinking, feeling, and doing. Every time we think in a certain way, practice a particular task, or feel a specific emotion, we strengthen this road. It becomes easier for our brains to travel this pathway. Say we think about something differently, learn a new task or choose a different emotion. We start carving out a new road. If we keep traveling that road, our brains begin to use this pathway more and this new way of thinking, feeling or doing becomes second nature. The old pathway gets used less and less and weakens. This process of rewiring your brain by forming new connections and weakening old ones is neuroplasticity in action. The good news is that we all have the ability to learn and change by rewiring our brains. If you have ever changed a bad habit or thought about something differently, you have carved a new pathway in your brain and experienced neuroplasticity firsthand. With repeated and directed attention towards your desired change, you can rewire your brain. And so in closing, I'd like to 
encourage everyone to aim to master our emotions, increase our <clears throat> self-awareness, learn to separate what you are creating from yourself or what you're creating for yourself from yourself. So I ask anyone who would like to um, come off of mute and share with us maybe what kind of actions steps you might think that you could take as a result of this element. <clears throat> John, you want to go ahead? Hey, Cheryl. So you've been close to us on this for several months, and I don't know if this tracks with it or not, but uh, hey, everybody from Florida. Um, if this tracks with it or not, like <clears throat> I've been getting up now for three or four months at 5.30 a.m. Monday through Friday. I don't know if I've only missed maybe one or two times like that. <clears throat> so Vanessa's got our little alarms on our phones. They stay in the bathroom. They're not in our bedroom. And I actually now look forward to getting up. Like I'm waking up sooner. It's not a stressor to me. I feel like I get more done before the sun comes up, even if it's just it's little things. It's my quiet time, get my little vitamin C, my fueling, my, my Bible reading, my prayer, then into my workout, then the dress. So honestly, at 52, that's been a major, that's been a lot of change. And actually, you know, through the weekend, I don't set it at 530, but I'm like, I'm kind of, I'm ready to get up. I'm ready to go get stuff done. And so I know there's more to that. Maybe some of you are the same way, but that's kind of just something real quick that kind of came to me. Like, you know, I used to stay up late at night, 11, 12 o'clock and, you know, sleep in. But now, I don't know, that little wave, that brain wave has changed. And, you know, I'm starting to head to bed after this meeting and all the Zooms get over. But I'm like, I'll wake up at 5, 5, 15. I'm like, I got to get up. Let's go. Yeah, you've created that new neural connection. Uh, and another great way to create a, a neural connection, I know we have a lot of coaches on here, we have a lot of clients on here. So when we get into a phase of self doubt, you know, we I just I showed you in the slide, we talked a little bit about nonverbal body language. So part of this study from Amy Cuddy was that they asked people to assume different um, body positions. And what they found is the people who did the more closed stance, regardless of who they were, if they did more of these closed stances for two minutes, they tended to think more in a negative light versus, you know, opening themselves up and standing tall. And then we thought more positively of ourselves, along with considering moving things from the I, I don't like this, I have to do I this, I that, to use your own name, Cheryl. You are going to do great sharing tonight, Element 24. Cheryl, you have everything in you and within you to, you know, teach this element. And standing there in my own power, I tried it for two minutes before I got on. Now, I know I'm not perfect, but it, it made me feel better, like I didn't have the nerves. Um, so I think at, at the end, what we're, what, he, what Dr. A is trying to, to show us here is that we can change our minds. We can easily change our minds just by how we, we phrase things in our own head and how we look at the world at large. I don't see any other hands up there. Has anybody else got a self-realization like that? We got about six minutes and I really wanna hear from you guys. Anybody? Mary Beth, talk to me about your cruise. I know you had to self-actualize. Let's go. Let's All hear right, it. I'll do it. I'll do yes. it. So um, Cheryl is my coach. She's absolutely amazing. Um, I was just on a four-day cruise um, uh, on a brand new ship with food at every corner and bars on every deck. Um, I, I realized that I don't need um, dessert to make me happy. It was the conversation at the dinner that made that dinner good. I ate what I was supposed, you know, what I could. I ate, um, you know, I skipped the bread. I'm not a pasta and rice person anyway, but I still skipped those. I made the, the decision to eat the proteins and the vegetables. It didn't eat the dessert. I did have one dessert over four nights, which I, which is a big win for me. Um, but I said, what, 
what I really self-realized today, and I said it to Cheryl, is that like I wasn't home an hour and I texted Cheryl, okay, for the win. Like this is what I did. And honestly, for me, um, in, in all those years passed, you know, you're on a diet and you do something and you go, oh, I screwed up this morning, forget it, I'll start tomorrow. Or, oh, it's already Monday, I screwed up this week, I'm starting next Monday. I came home and had my feelings this afternoon. I had lunch, a breakfast on the ship. I drove home and by the time I got home, I had my feelings this afternoon. I had, we were getting takeout tonight because we're exhausted. And I said, all right, I'm getting takeout. And in my mind, I went right back to that old salad I used to get with the fried chicken on it. And tonight I didn't, I got a light salad with, with beef on it. And there's no, no croutons, no, like, so for me, I, I'm, I'm shifting my thinking and I know I'm a travel agent, hence the little beach behind me. I travel a lot. I eat out a lot when I'm traveling. I just realized in those four days, I made the best decisions for me. That wouldn't have been me. Um, now it's six weeks or so. I wouldn't have been that over the summer at all. I would have been like, whatever, I'm eating. It's vacation, I'm eating. So so I trained, I feel like I trained my 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 thought process to say, I'm making the best choice that I can in front of me. Um, so yeah, that's it. Good. And so that means that neuroplasticity is happening because you're just retraining your brain, right? And like Dr. A said, that requires practice, 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 and more practice. Keep practicing. And when you have a setback, get back on the bike and start riding again. Rub some dirt in it and let's go, people, because you want you want to move from on your health continuum from that healthy body weight, healthy mindset, healthy sleep, healthy spirituality to ultra health. And that's that section that we're in here in Dr. A's book is, and in the, the life book is, we're talking about ultra health, living into your hundreds. And they're starting to show that there's scientific proof. They've done it in monkeys. We haven't translated it to humans yet, that it's possible to live to 150 years of age. So I don't know if you guys are with me, but I'm hoping that many of you are in the centurion category with me. I'll probably have a lot more wrinkles and I might cuss. I might be a heavy cusser, but it's only for entertainment because I just think it's funny when old people cuss. Anyway, <laughs> I do. I'm sorry. Anybody else have anything else? We have a couple more minutes. Anybody you else? Sure? Yeah. Um that video that you mentioned about the body hold on yes the body posture yes <laughs> you think we could get a link to that and maybe we can yeah. share it with everyone yeah i would i'll have to, to share that with you and there's another um uh video um it's a ted talk um from another gal that talks about um uh or no it's a gentleman i'll send you a couple of links really good videos um, that kind of leads you a little bit further down the path. Very helpful. Yeah, fantastic. You bet, Jonathan. I'll do that. Well, I guess we're coming to the end of our half hour. So I want to wish you guys an awesome rest of your Monday night. Um, till we see you again here next week. Be well and um, peace out. <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. You did such awesome. a great job. Thank, Thank you, you, Kelly. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.